Hello and welcome back to A Splash of Paint, where it's time to rejoin watercolour wonder Jeff Kersey as he puts the final finishing touches to today's Try Your Hand Up project. Thanks, Matthew. Well, you saw me in the earlier part of this picture put these reflections in for this hill here. I now need to do a similar thing for the, the really distant hill, uh, making sure that I use that really pale grey. So again, I'm going to wet the background, trying to leave that very thin line of dry white paper. You might wonder why I'd be doing a soft edge reflection when the mountain is when the different distant hills rather have got a, a hard edge to them. But that's because it'll make it appear, it'll help with the appearance that it's wet. Uh, so I want that grey. It was cobalt blue, rose madder and a bit of burnt umber. And I'm going to drop that in just gently underneath the distant landscape. That little dry line should be very fine. More or less following the shape of the hill. But it doesn't have to be exact. Maybe a bit stronger colour. Okay, now I've got a slightly darker mixture now. This has got some burnt umber and ultramarine blue in it. And I'm just going to try and emphasise the way that this bank is in front of the distant one and soften that in to the background. There's another bank juts out into the water around here. Let's just put that in. Fairly strong colour to bring it forward. And a strong colour at the water's edge there. With maybe a few hints of, of reflection. Okay, so let's have a look at the little boats. I've got a really small brush and I want some cobalt blue and ultramarine blue. And let's have a look, let's go around the top edge of this boat, that colour. In the cabin area, we'll have a couple of little windows, nothing too detailed, just a suggestion really. We're too far away to see a lot of detail in that. And some dark where it meets the, the water. I'm going to make the hull look three dimensional by putting a bit of shadow to the right of it. Okay, and then maybe a hint of reflection. So that's that little boat put in. Let's look at the next one. I'm making some more shadow colour. The cobalt blue, rose madder and burnt umber. And let's put a bit of, the, the light's coming from the left, so let's put a bit of shadow onto this hull. which gradually goes from the shadow colour through to white paper. Maybe a suggestion underneath that of the reflection, again leaving a very thin line, a broken shape for the reflection to suggest a few ripples around it. Um, and we'll look next at the larger boat. Same principle applies here in that there is a, a shadow on the hull to give it that curved effect. So I'm putting shadow at the back there on the rudder. I'm bringing that shadow right round the hull. Gradually bringing it round to white paper. And we'll have a bit of that reflected in the water as well. Bearing in mind, whatever is above the water is now upside down. It's the other way around. A 
can just use a damp brush to soften it in. Right, so let's have a look at the inside of the, that more distant bow. I've got some uh, ultramarine blue and burnt umber. And I'm just going to suggest the dark shadow inside the bow, leaving a tiny little key line round it to suggest the top of the hull. Um, I've got some more of this dark to suggest the dark colour at the base of the hull. Just softening that in. And then we'll look at this one here. There's a colour for this tarpaulin. I'm going to take some cerulean blue and ultramarine blue and put this colour in here, bringing that bringing that tent shape up to meet the mast. Maybe a bit more cerulean in that. And then I'm going to take a much stronger mixture of ultramarine blue and cerulean blue. A lot more ultramarine in it this time for this band around the top of the boat. Right from the front of the hull, trying to leave a tiny key line around it. And then at the base of the hull, the rich dark brown, ultramarine blue and burnt umber again. Okay, let's bring that right the way around there. Into the rudder at the, f at the stern. And then to make that appear reflected in the water, I'm leaving a very slight line again. And then bringing that in the other way around. Maybe let's, let's dampen it in. To create that feeling of reflection. Also that band, blue band around the top of the bow, that's reflected as well. with more shadow at this stern here. Then there's a little glimpse of the tarpaulin in the reflection, but not much. We don't see a lot of that. Whoops, been a bit clumsy there. Let's get rid of that. And then I'm going to take a little bit of opaque white and let's bring in a little touch of white from the hull of the boat into that reflection. Okay, now, I noticed I smudged this one slightly in the distance here. We could put a little touch of white back into the top of that one and maybe a little bit into the hull of that boat and again in the reflection. So the final thing to do is to put some detail in, mainly the masts. So I've got a number two detailer brush, a dark mixture of paint made from burnt umber and ultramarine blue. And I've got just an ordinary 12 inch ruler. And I find the best way to do this is to position the ruler so that my fingers are under that right hand side of it. That way, so it's raised from the paper. That way the ferrule of the brush runs along the ruler rather than the hairs. Because of course if the hairs run along the ruler, then it might wobble. And I also like to put these lines in quickly. I find them more effective if you get them in quickly. Okay, now I'm going to just develop that a little bit. Get it to a really good point. And then there's a cross piece here. Again, with the, again with the ruler raised away from the surface, just put that in. Nice straight line. I've got some thinner colour, more of a grey. 
because there are a few ropes from the top here. Let's put these in. Again, I find those, they work most effectively if they're done really quickly. Uh, there's a bit of shadow from the pole across that tarpaulin there. Um, there's a little post on this bit of land that juts out there, a couple. Those. And I think it's worth just getting a glimpse of reflection from these masts as well. Now that mast, it leans slightly to the right, so I've got to make sure the reflection does as well. And the reflection though, I've got to, I want a little bit more hit and miss, a bit, almost a bit broken up to suggest the little ripples or waves in the water. That one, I probably can better do that one without the ruler at all. And then there are the suggestions of reflection from those lines. And there's just one more thing to do. A little bit of tidying up with the white gouache. Um, I've noticed that the top edge of that boat has got a little bit lost. So with the detailer brush, I'm just putting that in. Uh, maybe a couple of lines in the hull to suggest the clinker build of the boat. And they would, of course, appear in the reflections. And these posts, maybe a little bit of reflection. Sometimes it's little details like this that can make quite a difference to the picture. Just noticed I've forgotten to put the dark inside the hull here. That doesn't look quite right. So I'm just using the detailer brush again with the rich dark brown. That's the burnt umber and ultramarine blue and just getting that in, which also helps to emphasize the bit of light on top of the hull. And of course this stripe here is darker to the right of it. So we'll just take the tape off see what we've got. It's almost like putting a frame around it to give us a nice clean edge. So we'll call that finished. I hope you've enjoyed watching and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks Jeff, great project with lots to try. From using masking fluid to some really useful advice for painting perfect reflections. Why not have a go and see how you get on? Right folks, time for our final break but join us in part four when versatile artist Keith Fennick returns to add depth and shadows in part two of his watercolour landscape project. See you soon.